In the workshop, a Cotswold Heritage Atlas Steam Plant Part 2, making the water tank. The last time I went up to Blackgate's Engineering, I bought some assorted brass sheet. This is just a collection of offcuts and very useful to have in the workshop. A quick prod with my finger tells me that this is the same gauge as the base on the condenser. So the thing to do is to sit the condenser on top of the new piece of brass, draw around it and then spot through the holes. If I was a proper engineer, I would measure the base of the condenser, then carefully mark it out on a piece of brass sheet. But this is a much quicker method. Here's the shape I need to cut out using the band saw. Then I need to drill some holes where the black spots are. So it's over to my old bandsaw, and at the moment it's got a very blunt blade, so I'm actually having to hold this at a bit of a strange angle, but as long as the blade follows the line, that's okay. This is a good indicator that it's time to change the blade, but generally speaking, I carry on regardless. And I hold the metal plate at an angle when I'm cutting it, to suit where the blade is wandering to. My old bandsaw is a Burgess bandsaw, and it's an amazing piece of equipment. Unlike my drilling machine, which is not a good piece of equipment at all, but I live with it, at least it drills holes. I could buy a much better drilling machine, and I really could buy a much better milling machine, but the whole point of using these machines for the videos is to show the fact that you do not necessarily need to have a really upmarket system to make good things. I just try and compensate for the inaccuracy and general poor performance of what I'm using. And thinking about it, I once had a girlfriend like that. In this clip I'm using the one inch belt sander to round the ends of the brass. I suppose I could make a jig to do this, but instead I'm doing it freehand by eye, and I think it looks okay. I'm using the four inch belt sander to clean up the edges. Over now to the body of the water tank. This is a piece of brass tube as you can see. I've drilled a hole which is two imperial drill sizes under five sixteenths of an inch, and in this clip I'm threading it using a five sixteenths by thirty two threads per inch tap. After which I screw in a 5 16 by 32 threaded union adapter. And here's the brass tube sat on the base plate. Making water tanks like this is a very simple job. There are quite a few skills that you need to pull into play, but it's all simple stuff. I cleaned up the base and the inside of the tube using a piece of Scotch-Brite, so now it's clean enough to be soldered. But first of all, I need to apply some flux. By the way, this is soft soldering, not silver soldering. I apply the flux to the inside edge of the bottom part of the tube. Quite a copious amount really, and this will run down inside the tube once I apply the heat. The action of this flux really does clean the metal once you heat it up. Notice I'm putting quite a lot of it around the inside of the union. For soldering, I use a piece of stainless steel fire grate that I get from Blackgate's Engineering. It's really designed for model locomotives, but I find it very useful for sitting on the vise for soldering in general. So now with the flux applied and the tank in position, it's time to bring the blowtorch in. I'll do this at high speed because you can't see a lot anyway. I'm using plumber's solder down inside the tank and I'm heating the tank all the way around. You can see the broad fillet of solder that's appeared around the joint between the tank and the base. So I just use a paintbrush dipped in water to clean this up. Then I just leave the tank to cool down in its own time. Back in the workshop, I'm trying to find a way of tightening up the bolts that hold the flange against the steam chest cover. And as is usual, the best tool for the job is one of these very cheap spanners from the sets that are available from Blackgate's Engineering. They're very cheap, but work well, and I use them a lot. A few people commented on the base of the engine, and yes, it looks good, but really, it's only made out of quite thin MDF. And one problem is, it's already been mounted on a baseboard, and the holes are not where you would expect them to be. When I measure the positions of the holes, for instance this one against the one above it, is 8.5 inches between centres. And from the top hole on the left to the hole on the right is 7.5 inches. But take a look at the previous clip, the holes are not in line. I think I will fill these holes with pieces of dowel and then I will mark out the baseboard accurately so that when it all goes together it will be much better. I finally noticed that my steel rules, or rulers, or whatever you want to call them, are in a bit of a mess. These are quite old, and over the years they've been used for many jobs, not necessarily anything to do with measuring. So with the help of an RDG tool 7-inch rule, and some cellulose thinner, or lacquer thinner, they're now clean. I was quite surprised to find that they had so many numbers on them. 
In the time it took to clean all this measuring equipment, the water tank had cooled. I'm temporarily fitting a union nut over the thread so that it doesn't get damaged. And now it's time to finalise the layout. There's something really bothering me about this layout. I don't like the condenser being on the left hand side. I would prefer the condenser to be behind the boiler. So using my RDG Tools 7 inch ruler I'm taking some measurements. I'm not using the ones I've just cleaned because I don't want to get them dirty. I much prefer the condenser, which is clad in the same wood as the boiler, to sit on the baseboard close to the boiler. Maybe even behind the boiler, but then you can't see it. So I think the previous position was possibly better, but I'll leave it there for the moment. Having the condenser at the right hand side means I will have to reroute the exhaust piping from the engine, but as I'm going to do that anyway, that's not a problem. At the right hand side of the engine, between the boiler and the engine baseboard, there's going to be a steam turret. The steam turret will have two steam valves on it, one to regulate the amount of steam fed to the engine, and the other one will just be an inlet to allow for the connection of an airline to run the engine on compressed air. And the steam siren will also be fitted to the top of this turret. Right, I've made a decision. This is where I think everything should fit. The condenser needs to be between the boiler and the engine, and in front of the condenser, right at the front, is going to be the turret. And at the left hand side will be the water tank and the water pump. I like this layout, and provided that the owner also likes it, that's what I'm going to go with. He'll be seeing the video shortly. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.